IND doesn't make all that many models that can be considered potentially class leading, but the i10 City car has always fitted that description. This improved second generation contender introduces a level of infotainment connectivity and electronic safety provision that buyers in this class won't expect. As before though, its main draw lies with spacious practicality and in the way that it does the basic things really, really well. There may be more exciting urban runabouts than this on your radar, but there aren't many better ones. On the move, the i10 meets most of the main priorities that city car buyers will have, so it's easy to see out of, light to steer in town and easy to park with a usefully tight turning circle. It even copes reasonably well at cruising speeds on the highway, feeling solid and relatively refined at the legal limit. It won't be quite as at home, though, if the need arises to push on a little over twisting secondary roads, although with this revised model, Hyundai's tried to improve things a little in that regard. Uh, they've modified the steering ratio for a little more feel at the helm and they've added larger front shock absorber bump stops so the car won't bounce around so much at speed on the bumpy tarmac. Engine-wise, there are two options, a three-cylinder, one-litre, 66 PS unit and a four-cylinder, 1.2-litre, uh, 87 PS Kappa power plant that we're trying here. If you favour the smaller three-cylinder unit, you'll be given the chance to choose it in a more frugally orientated SE Blue guys uh, that sees an engine stop-start system fitted as standard. And now, if your preference is for this 1.2-litre variant, your dealer will also offer you the option of a four-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, the main styling changes made can be found here at the front, which adopts the more distinctive cascading grille that characterises several of Hyundai's latest models. Uh, Up-spec versions like this one get small circular LED daytime running lights in the grille's outer corners, and even smaller front fog lamps built into these uh, now more sharply defined lower corner air intakes. Time to take a seat up front. Now, back in 2013, when this second generation i10 model was originally launched, this interior set fresh standards for city car quality and design. And although some rivals have caught up since, it's still one of the nicer cabins in the segment. Uh, now, if Hyundai could further develop things next time around with a dash of Volkswagen Up or Fiat 500 style character, the ambiance would be even better. For the time being, though, the ambiance can be lifted with optional blue or, as in this case, red trimming for the dashboard and the upholstery. Plus, on this top premium SE variant, the fascia has a more sophisticated feel thanks to the addition of this 7 inch touchscreen navigation system. Now let's take a seat in the rear. So even with a couple of six-footers installed back here, front seat occupants shouldn't have to compromise space to accommodate them. Finally, let's take a look in the boot, where the tailgate rises to reveal one of the largest trunk openings in the segment and a 252-litre total boot capacity that's one of the very biggest in the class. Here we have an A-segment contender that's now almost everything it needs to be, and pretty much everything a model of this kind can be. Which means, if you're shopping in this segment, you have to consider it.